was under the impression that we see his shadow and maybe a sense of what his darker side is when it comes out. Mm-hmm. Is that his shadow we're seeing, or is that really anybody or this shadow lurker that can belong to anyone? That's a great question. It is his shadow. Um, and I actually struggled a lot because there was a lot more I could have put in the movie, but I kept feeling like I was getting so bogged down. I needed it just to be a tease of everything, but you're absolutely right. Um, that's exactly what I intended it to be. So there's a few shots before that where he's got his flashlight and then his shadow turns around independent of him. And then a few shots later it comes out of the wall. So it right. is supposed to be sort of um, each person's shadow is supposed to be kind of the worst part of them. Oh, it is. Um, okay. Great. Well, thank you yeah. for then giving us that much of an insight in your, in your trailer because then that is something where I sat and said, how many of them will remain? And it's it's a it's a more compelling, I think, and and it's not just sci-fi. It's and, and not that anything's just. It's actually something that's going to make you think the whole way through it, and really wonder about the dark side of all of us. So so. Oh, yeah. I know. I I really do appreciate that comment because, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen so many horror thrillers where it's just like some total over-the-top effects monster, nothing really to think about. The movies I appreciate are the ones that kind of mess with your head a little bit. Right, like, right. Maybe, maybe I'm going over old school, but movies like Jacob's Ladder, I just love. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going old school. That, that's what really got me scared of scary movies. Yeah. Jacob's Ladder? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about Psycho. Oh, yeah. Alfred, yeah. H- Alfred Hitchcock's Birds. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You, you know, things that make you go... This could really happen. So well, it's it's funny because Alfred Hitchcock was a huge inspiration. Um, I know we talked about this on one chat, but for some of the people that didn't hear it before, I actually um, used a lot of old school sort of Al- Al- yeah, Alfred Hitchcock techniques, like when the kid gets dragged away into the shadow. Mm. What what I actually did was I built a platform that was on like a 45 degree slope about 15, 20 feet high and then the camera was up on top. The kid was holding on and then let go and slid backwards oh, and we okay. filmed it. But because it's in the dark, you can't tell that it's, it's not on the ground. And so it created this weird eerie effect of him being sucked back into the shadows. And that's actually a totally an old technique, you know. Mm. I, I did a lot of CGI, but I also tried to do a lot of stuff practically and mix them, which I think I personally appreciate it when it's not all one thing or the other, that, you know, some of them are actual real effects. Um, the light bulb, too. So, yeah. The, the light bulb was very, was very familiar. Um, yeah. It, uh, it, see, I... I I always appreciate movies. I'm I'm glad that, that she mentioned that because like Aliens was the first the first uh, real sci-fi thriller that I went to in, in high school. Aliens came out the year I was a senior in high school, and um, what I appreciated about it was the the psychological aspect to okay, we've got this creature on the ship with us. Yeah. What are we gonna do? Um, and how we just stalk them one by one by one. Yeah. And, Dealing with everybody's emotions, dealing with Ash, the uh, the synthetic person, yeah. all of that. That's what made the movie. It wasn't the creature that made the movie. It was the jousting back and forth between between all. No, uh, you're you're dead right. And made the film. And, and you guys are like the ideal fan because Alien was another huge inspiration. And I was fortunate enough to work with a cinematographer named Derek Van Lint, and he was Ridley Scott's cinematographer on the original Alien. Wow. And so I asked, I asked him a lot of questions about how they went about filming that, and it became sort of an inspiration for me. For example, they built that whole ship um, as a circular set so that they could keep going around and, and never sort of um, lose sight of the fact that they were on a movie set, if that makes sense. So the actors mm-hmm. really felt like they were in that world rather than you know, turning around and looking at a bunch of crew and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that really made an emotional impact because it made the actors sort of really live in that scene. Mm-hmm. And another good piece of trivia is, remember the great classic scene where the alien comes out of the person's stomach? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, <laughs> um, Ridley Scott didn't tell the actors what that scene was going to be, and he tore mm-hmm. the pages out of the script so they uh-huh. didn't know. 
So it was all because the actors came in and had no idea what was going to happen. They knew their lines of dialogue, but they didn't know the thing was going to come out. And the only thing that gave it away is Sigourney Weaver saw the cinematographer and he had like a rain poncho on because there's going to be so much blood coming out. <laughs> and she knew something was up. <laughs> That's why we got such good reactions in because everybody just kind of stood there stunned. No, but there wasn't that scream. Everybody didn't just scream at the same time. They just kind of yeah, stood there all... as the creature were trying away. They were truly was... freaked. Yep. Well done. All right, well so done. there's two things. I got to go back to one scene then, because you said that he was on that 45 degree angle. Did yeah. you pull him back in at the 45 degree angle? Because it looked different, and there was a juxtaposition. I'm like, tell us about, to... tell us about when he was pulled back in, the little boy. Oh, okay. So when he was pulled back in, that was actually on the ground. That's what um, I thought. Okay, because that yeah. was. The... Yeah. So it's a little bit of editing magic. So when he slides away, that was on the ramp. To, get, to make the feeling like he was sort of being sucked into the shadows. But then when they reach out and pull him back in, they're just pulling him in from that pool of light. Um, so what's interesting yeah. is when they pull him in on the pool of light, because it is at that different angle, you wonder if it's the same person or same sense or if like his dark side is coming in with him because you just don't know the story. You don't know enough yeah. about it. So it's like, is it the, is it the real kid, how they save him from it? Or is it like, is he now like darker? It doesn't matter. <laughs> the second Ooh, question I have. Now you're getting into the whole sub movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, it, it's it's somewhat it's though. If the guys do that with angles, but here was my second question. I, I wanted to ask this about the marketing yeah. side, um, which is on the second side. I just googled you. I, I googled shadow lurkers. I I binged you. I did all this different stuff, and I'm amazed when I turn off the search plus your world. You've managed to either master SEO. Or, I mean, you're on the top of Google. You're on the top of all these different things. What is your strategy going forward to get the message out? And how are you doing such an excellent job in the social space? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. I didn't even know that we were doing that well. Um, Look at I have these little think... demon over there. Oh, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, that's him. Okay. In that case, don't answer because I know you have a superstar working on that on your behalf. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I saw that girl. I saw that. I was thing, trying girl. not to. And it would be even more obvious if I did that. Right. Well, All right, one Kim, thing. Well, you you're working your magic. You've done a good job, Kim. I googled him too, and he's right up at the top. He's right up at the top there. Thank so you. Wow. Uh, Edwin and I nice are tag team in it. Nicely done, guys. Right. I didn't even know that. Right. right on. See, we're doing yeah, things you, behind the scenes. You're Andrew. definitely visible. <laughs> You're, de you're definitely visible. Now, Andrew, this leads yeah. to, uh, there's, a, there's one obvious thing. Sure. If, the, if, the, if the shadow is from each of us, that mm -hmm. means you can't ever get rid of it. Uh-huh. I mean, even, he's going to be alone thinking he's safe, and here comes yeah. his own shadow. And the, yep, and there's the opportunity for a great um, extra suspense. Maybe even the sequel. <laughs> you, you never get rid of your own dark side, your own shadow. I know that's so the record, freaking me out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, in the feature film, um, the movie starts three days before this whole eclipse happens. Mm. And on day one, um, it's just shadows starting to play tricks with people's minds on the wall in the same way like when we were kids in a room and we were afraid of a shadow on the wall. On day two, people wake up, bright sunny day, they go to school, go to work, and all of a sudden you look around and you realize nobody's casting a shadow, which is totally impossible, and nobody knows where all the shadows went. And then day three, obviously the eclipse comes and it all comes back. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for messing with people's heads. <laughs> I just want to die in a spectacular way, okay? <laughs> well, the head blowing up, that's already taken. Yeah, no, if, if you could just cut mine <laughs> off, you know, if you just, 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 if the, you know, the creature gets, like, like, what was the, what was the movie where the creature gets mad, he just backhands the guy and the head comes, head just comes off, you know, fingernails just cut the, 
Ew. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, because I want my round head to roll, you know. I want uh, to roll. <laughs> <laughs> just see me rolling down the street. He's over. <laughs> you are really thinking about this demise. Yeah. That's scary. Mm. Yeah, I how many had time? <laughs> how many people have tried to break into Hollywood and, and they're remembered for that death scene? It's like you don't remember a thing they said, but they you remember how their head came off. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I've been thinking about this for a while. Andrew. We're gonna have a we'll have a grand death scene for you. I promise. Jay, okay. the next sure. question is: How many middle names do you have? Because that's starting to sound a little like serial blank. blank. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's every serial killer, every serial whatever has like two middle names. I'm joking, but it's just it's funny. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> She's asking me. Yes, I was joking. Oh. Though, but... No, no, I'm, I'm Jonathan Christopher Kendall. That's all. That's all I get. That's no, all. no, no. I know. I was. I was kidding. But um. Okay. So, he missed it. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was the recent Avengers of the Hulk, where you get the sense that the Hulk always there's that dark side of him as well, and he's always just just keeping that in check. And so it was just. It, I can't wait to see how this rolls out. Did you um? Did you just mention the, the Avengers? I did. <laughs> Yeah, we we're uh, we're all big Josh Whedon fans here, and I think steal a lot of inspiration from there. We, in fact, that was kind of a lot of what we were talking about doing in terms of marketing to answer some of your marketing questions. Um, I kind of took from the fact that there's shows like Josh Whedon had a Firefly, which everybody loved, but the industry canceled, and people could not understand why. And so I thought, okay, why don't we go the opposite way? Why don't we build support? from the fans ahead of time and then take that to the studio so they don't get so out of touch with what the fans want. I mean, if the studios had paid attention to the fans for Firefly, there's no way that would have been canceled. So, you know, this week, come Monday, Tuesday, if I can march in there and say, look, here's 20, 30, 40, 50,000 fans already behind it, that gives us a lot more leverage to, to make the movie we want to make. I, I don't know. I, maybe I'm an optimist, but I just think it's kind of a new way of going about it, and I think it could work. Hey, Pam, mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the Google Analytics showing for, for hits, where they're coming from, and demographics? Uh, I'm curious. It's interesting. Um, here's something for Kim Flowers. All of a sudden, we're getting more female viewership in the last 48 Hi. hours. Hi. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> yeah. and, our, and our top places are the U.S., Canada, and Australia, and then the Woo! U.K. Yep, and then the U.K. and the Philippines. I don't know. We got some fan in the Philippines. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I always like those scary movies. I guess horror translates. You know, it's funny, when you're talking to the studios, one of the things that they really hound me about is they, they love movies that can translate well internationally. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, funny enough, like dramas or comedies don't necessarily translate well because mm -hmm. a lot of jokes are very much, you know, colloquialisms or subtleties, whereas horror is universal. And it doesn't matter what nation you're from, everybody's been afraid of their shadow at some point. So, you know, that's hopefully a compelling case. Yeah, you know, I just want to, I just got to say one thing. AC all the way on the left there, you've got a killer <laughs> backdrop. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder why you love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Look the screen. Thanks. <laughs> I'm one just listening. Question. I'm just taking. I'm taking notes oh. down. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> He's taking notes. <laughs> one. Uh, you, AC. You want to ask the last question, and then um, we're going to end this hangout. We're going to have another one in probably about an hour or so, because we're we're trying to uh, give Andrews a chance to rest his voice, um, <laughs> right. because he's going to be doing a lot hard. of talking tomorrow too. <laughs> My tea. <laughs> Kim T. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I, 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 I let anyone else that wants to probably ask a question, but I really appreciate you know you guys sharing all and. You taking the time and sharing all this information. Yeah. Uh, Can you awesome. tell them how you did it in two days? I think it, I think that would be yeah. very interesting. Why don't how we save that question for the for for uh, for, a, for, a, for, a, for the next session? Oh, good question. Good point. Uh, good point. Okay. Okay. Are they, are they better than us, Evelyn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. I no, really appreciate it. Sense.
No. And honestly, the, the best way you could help, and I know I keep saying this, but to anybody who hasn't seen it, if you could keep sharing it with other people, um, the more people we get behind it, the more impact we can have with the studio. So thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. I'm glad I, I came in. I saw Kim's Kim's invite, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I, I had a few minutes. This, I'm not exactly dressed. <laughs> Yeah, she got me an amendment this morning for the wrong session. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's, it's evening here. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> All the way over All in right. Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, no, good luck with the movie. Good, good luck. And uh, um, like I said, I do the best rolling head. Yeah, yeah. You gotta see it to believe. You're it's on. Right. You're on. Okay. <laughs> so Kendall wants a rolling head. Yes. Um, uh, uh, what's yeah? Uh, Edwin wants a blown up head. And we're throwing somebody off a Drayton building. Edwin wants to jump off a building. Yeah. I just what want to do. Oh, oh, pretty. What, what do you? What's gonna happen to Kim? Oh yeah, Kim. The damsel in distress. Yeah. I no, never Kim, no, yet. you gotta have a fierce kind of where you're <laughs> fighting one of them. Yeah, we'll have to fight one of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Kat, the uh, person that was in here earlier, the dog kind of bit her. Uh, she would be great with some fire. Okay. So, we gotta figure out something to get her to twirl fire, you know. <laughs>